Hello, everyone, and welcome back to One Soccer. I'm your host for today, Josh Deming. I am joined by my colleague, Alex Gongay Ruzik. And today, Alex, with the transfer window roughly closing in about a month, we are going to discuss five Canadians that we believe could benefit from a transfer. And we are going to kick things off with Jonathan David because it's not like you and I have talked about him about 100 times already this window, but it's important that he moves for several different reasons. But He's been linked to a couple teams in Italy, as we know that Tottenham and Juve are the kind of the last two that really want to sign him. But the last rumor that's going around, Alex, is that he could actually stay put in Lille. So tell me right now whether you're a glass half full or glass half empty kind of guy of whether or not he stays in Liga. It's one of those where I'm like, ultimately, it's not the worst thing in the world. I think as a as a player, there's a worse thing, play worse place to be stuck than a top five league on a club that should be pushing for Europe, should be pushing um, for, for the title. So I think it's not the end of the world, but I also just want to see David take that next step, take that challenge. Uh, but also, I guess if the right move doesn't materialize, it's also not the worst thing uh, in the world. But I think really the bigger thing for me is less so all that. I think it's more David's desire to want to make a move. And I think that's really why I'd I mean, he's a good name to have on this list and why we've been following his future so closely. Because I think if that desire wasn't there, his contract's up in two years, let him run out this next year and see what happens next year. Because all of a sudden, if you're a year left on your deal, you want to get sold, you'll probably get sold a lot quicker, your price will change, or you just run down the next two years and you become a free agent. Great. But obviously, David's had this desire to move. You hear it all throughout last year saying, I want to give England a shot. I want to make that move to a big club. Um, so if, if, if a player wants to make that move, you, you want to see him make that jump up. So for, for, for me, it's more, it, it's a less of the fit itself. Look, we can dive into the nuance of certain fixed fit X and staying at Lille, etc. Ultimately, he's at a top five league at a good club. If he goes out and scores 20 plus goals in league on next year will only be good for him. But if, if a player wants to make that jump up, uh, you can only want to support and push those ambitions. Now, you can't deny the fact that he has desire. There's reports out there that Al Halal have offered him 12 million euros net per year, and they want him to come just for one year so that he could come run out that contract and leave. Now, again, whether those reports are 100% accurate or not, he said no, and the word is, like you said, he wants to go to kind of a, a top 10 to 15 type club. So he has desires. We know how much he wants to go to the Premier League. So, Alex, I'm just going to throw some pros and kind of cons at you, and I want you just to... Tell me what you think of them. So we're, we're going to start with the cons of him staying at Lille. And it's the fact that almost what more does he have to prove? You know, he's already won a league title with Lille up against PSG. He's gone on to do three seasons now scoring at an elite level, I would say, especially last season where he scored 24 goals. He also, to me, proved that he can play in a lone striker system as well as a dual striker system. He scores from his national team. There's nothing more in my eyes that he can really prove in Liga unless he gets stuck there. Now, on the flip side of that, looking at some of the, the pros that you could, I guess, argue is the fact that Paulo Fonseca plays some brilliant football. I'm a big fan. You all remember me last season saying, you know what, it sucks that he is here because I, I do think he could have found a good home, but he was kind of picky where he wanted to go, which is a good thing. But then he got a coach like Paulo Fonseca, and he had, a, he had a very fun year. You can't deny the fact. Scoring 24 goals, playing that brand of football, it's fun. He will do it again. He gets European football, albeit it is the Conference League, but he he should be able to play, you know, twice a week, basically. And then the fact that he can hopefully, without some of the bigger names out there, how, what, whether this means a lot or not, with, without a Mbappe, potentially, Neymar, potentially, Messi's not there, maybe Lacazette can't do what he did, he could go on and maybe win the Golden Boot. I mean, like, you know, there's still something to play for. And then with a year left on his contract, maybe that $50 million price tag drops to 40 you know there's maybe a little bit more clubs that are like you know what this is something i can do now so with what i said there alex pros cons does it did, did i make you lean towards one way or the other again i think it's something where the the safety net isn't as bad as it maybe feels like it's just it, it, again it's it, it feels you also add to the situation yeah when you get linked to clubs like in, in in the Premier League, you get linked to clubs like Juventus, you get linked to clubs like Tottenham. Yeah, of course, when, you know, it is a bit of a letdown if those moves don't happen. You go back to a Lille, but again, Lille, Lille remains a good club. They play in a good league. They'll have ambition of wanting to push towards the Champions League next year to win a European trophy, uh, etc. So I'd kind of stick in that camp. I think really another point I'll add to maybe the disappointment that is felt, because I think the big 
the, you, you raise a big point about the league title is that when you're at a club like Lille and they're a selling club, make no mistake, look at what they've moved on over the past few years. They do a great job of it. Also, a lot of those teams always run in cycles. Like you see it with the, you know, the, the famed Monaco team of well, a half decade ago and all these teams that you've seen that make runs. I, I, Ajax, for example, right? The, these teams run in cycles. And I think the weird thing as well about Jonathan David is that he was there. They had a great cycle in the sense they won a league title, a huge upset, huge performance. And so many of those players left, right? Mike Magnon, Jonathan Bamba, Jonathan Nicone, uh, so, so Sven Botman. Like you can go through yeah. these list of guys who all left. And it is just weird that David is still there. Um, so that's kind of one where it, it's just really the timing of it all at Lille. I think it's something where if he spends four or five seasons at Lille and he kind of catches the right cycle, it kind of makes sense. Um, but I, I think, yeah, it's just, it's one of those where I'm really, I'm torn between both sides and you can probably hear it and in, in, in how I'm going back and forth here. <laughs> it's, it's tough. We'll have to wait and see. But I mean, one thing's for sure. I, I hope that he stays in Europe. I mean, that big offer from Saudi Arabia I mentioned, I'd rather him stay at Lille and wait for that opportunity. But another Canadian that could be on the move is Tejan Buchanan. We've seen plenty of links linking him to the Serie A with Inter Milan, Lazio, Juve. None of them look like they're going to happen. A recent rumor just came out linking him to Burnley. I've had a lot of Burnley fans talking to me and telling me, you know, if they if he does go there, they don't think he'd play as a winger. It would have to be probably as a fullback because they have so many wingers or linked to so many wingers. Uh, what do you make of this move? Because he's only played a couple games right now in um, Belgium right now this season with Club Bruges, and he's been mostly featuring as a right back in a 4-3-3 system and also as a wing back. So do you think that there's a chance that he could move this window? And is it a horrible move if he doesn't? Well, certainly it sounds like he's there's, there's a chance he moves. I mean, all these... All we've heard since is the World Cup performance is just rumors. So certainly there's enough clubs interested in him. And I think it's something where, again, if he can make that that step up and build off what he showed at that World Cup, build off what he's shown at in his season and a half with, with Bruges, make that jump into a top five league. I, I think that's the different scenario versus a David where, of course, Jonathan David, you get stuck in uh, a, a top five league Again, not the end of the world, whereas Buchanan, not saying he's going to get stuck at Bruges. It's a great developmental spot. It's a great landing point. But when you get that chance to make that jump into a top five league, you want to take it. And I think Burnley is a fascinating project. Vincent Company, kind of, uh, you know, taking a lot of pep ball that he learned in his last few years there at Man City and made them a very fun team to watch in the championship. All of a sudden it becomes interesting. Yeah, you hear Tejan Buchanan will play at fullback, like we mentioned, might maybe not his best position, but... I like the idea of him learning in a system like that in Burnley in a tough league where, you know, Burnley as a fullback, you're going to have to play a lot in possession. We see how these sorts of teams play with their, their fullbacks. It's a very different demand than what he's faced at Bruges where, it, it, you know, it's different systems, different uh, d demands. And, yeah, the fact that you get a chance to jump into a top five league, if the opportunity materializes, I think it, it's one where it makes a lot more sense uh, for, for him. Yeah, I have a couple of pros and cons. I mean, the cons for me is the fact that, you know, he has been linked to these big clubs. We want to see him go there. We don't really want to see him get stuck playing at right back. Even even I don't mind him as a wing back, but it kind of seems like he's leaning towards playing as, as a right back all season. I, I think that there's a couple of good leagues out there. I mean, I always want to see him go to the Bundesliga. I just feel like it'd be a perfect fit for his style. I think Italy, there's some clubs there. Just the fact that these rumors are out there and then for it all to maybe him end up staying at Club Bruges, which like you mentioned, isn't terrible but it's just the fact that he's not even playing to i think his best strength but some of the cons is the fact that he's never had a stable situation at club bruges i mean he's won some silverware there but he's had multiple managers he's played in multiple positions so you know what i mean maybe he does turn into a fantastic right back or even a wing back this season but i want to see him play consistently in a specific position and hopefully continue to grow his game but now we're going to move on to another player who i I'm kind of on the fence of whether I want to see him go or not, and that is Liam Miller. We've seen Liam Miller go over to Switzerland, had a very successful first spell in his first season with FC Basel. It kind of looked like there was some transfer rumors going on there. He stayed that second season, and he didn't really have a solid season going on. You know, what he produced on top of the fact that he got stuck at left wing back quite a bit. He was he played a right wing back. He didn't get to play in that 4-2-3-1 system on the wings where he really thrives in. So there's, you know, there's some there's some links out there, maybe linking him over to the championship in England, going back there. So what do you make of that? And again, do you think it would be the worst case scenario if he does stay another season in Switzerland? Yeah, I think uh, for, for me, though, with Liam Miller, it feels like 
his best position remains on the wing. He, he can certainly fill in that wing back, but even when he plays wing back, he has such forward facing tendencies that you want to see him to continue to develop as a, as a winger. And uh, Basel in the Swiss League are, is a great developmental spot. We saw what it did for him in his first year playing in that natural position, but just certainly last year, it's more, it's less the you know the league and the club of Basel as well, a good club. It's just if it doesn't fit there. Uh, the championship's an interesting one because as we see, it's a very demanding league and it's a league that asks a lot of consistency. And as a winger, it's a good challenge because wingers uh, are often the ones that might that usually struggle the most with, with consistency. So for a winger that's still relatively young like, like Miller is, uh, it could certainly be, be a chance for him to just go in and, and get used to that sort of consistency and that, that physicality of a, of a league like that and, and get back to his natural position. Now, for me with uh, Miller, because I, I agree, I think it's funny with the Nashi, a place where he can realistically work into the starting 11 and in the position that he's best suited. But we're going to stick with the wingers right now, Alex, but we're going we're gonna to go to a vet, and that is Junior Hoylet, because right now, after leaving Reading, who got relegated, he is a free agent. So maybe does he, does he return to the championship? Is there some clubs there? Does he return to Reading? I know that there were some rumors there. It doesn't seem like that's likely going down to League One or maybe a – you know, I move back to this side of the pond, you know, <laughs> like going, going to major league soccer. Is there something there? What, what, what is your thought and what is your hopes for a, uh, such a talented vet for the Canadian national team? Yeah, that's an intriguing one. Toilet's one of those guys you can just see playing in 2026, even if he's on the older side, just because the way he plays and the leadership and everything he, he provides and the, the quality and the championship. It's nice because he's very familiar with the league. He'll, he'll be valued as a leader uh, again, just the consistency he'll get from playing at, at that level, I don't mind. But also, I wonder if he could be intrigued to play in MLS. I also think he's a profile of of signing that teams will look at. Like, we've seen a lot of Canadian national team players make the jump over the pond. Of course, we see Sam Anacubi and Richie Larea recently. Uh, Scott Arfield is someone in his, his 30s, a, a former national team player, makes that jump. You know, their, their teams are also pushing to do the same with the Americans. We've seen a fair few... American national team players. That's kind of the new era of MLS. They want some of these Canadian and American players to return uh, and, and sign. So I think with someone with Hoylet's quality, I think he, he could do very well in, in a league like MLS. And I wonder if he could be tempted as a, as a free agent because there'd be certainly, you'd have to imagine teams would be interested in his services. Yes, because as a free agent, if you don't know, you can still sign to Major League Soccer despite the window being closed until September. So there's a, a sneaky option there. It's just for me, again, it's about finding the right situation for him. He is championship proven. In my eyes, the championship is a very good league. I like the fact that he can start there. I, I more so want to see him a little bit higher up the pitch. I know the last, past few seasons he, he there's he's been trialed a lot at the wing back role, but I just like him a little bit further up the pitch because a lot of time with the national team, you even see him drift towards the midfield in that that second striker kind of role. We know he's good on the wings. I don't really want to see him as a wing back because I mean, frankly, if you're looking at it from a Canadian point of view we don't need another wing back so a, a goal for me is if he could find a good home in the championship where he can play on the wings or if he goes to major league soccer and find a, a club where he can fit in and again play somewhere on the wings I, I don't think there's any issue there in major league soccer but that is indeed where we are also going to stay because dane st Clair, alex is going to be the last player we're going to discuss today i don't honestly i don't think it's realistic that he will move this window but there is a, a debate around it because Dane St. Clair is, in my eyes, probably the future between the sticks for the Canadian men's national team. I know Cray Poe is there, but Dane is the younger player. He got his opportunity at this Gold Cup. I, I think that he could make that jump to Europe. I just don't really know when and where. You could argue if he was to move this window, Minnesota probably don't have a, a replacement lineup. It'd be very tricky, obviously, because, you know, they, the window's closed. So they just it's, they kind of got to do with what they got. So that's why I don't think it's likely. But maybe in January, and I know that it's difficult to see a keeper move to Europe and go right into a starting 11, but there are injuries, right? Like if, if there's a, a league out there, maybe Belgium, Netherlands, championship again, maybe there's a big injury that happens and Dane St. Clair potentially becomes an option there. What are what are your thoughts? Do you think it's time for Dane St. Clair to, in the near future, move to Europe? That's an interesting one because goalkeepers are such unique situations, especially in MLS. It's different versus selling a left winger halfway through the season. It's easier to procure a replacement, to have one lined up and it makes it complicated for a St. Clair because also it's tougher to buy a keeper. If you're a team, you rarely see keepers get bought halfway through the season in, in, in Europe, for example. So it's a bit of a catch-22 situation because does he wait till January and make risk-making a move where you don't 
like it's complicated as a goalkeeper maybe you don't start right away or do you go halfway through a club season but then the team doesn't have the right replacement lined up yeah we've seen some mls move on some goalkeepers like matt turner but we also went this summer we saw a situation like georgie petrovich at new england new england didn't have a replacement petrovich getting all these offers from clubs like you know league and then it led to a bit of a messy situation but between the 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 two parties there so for St. Clair, that's the big hurdle. And I think as well, it's just, it's something where he still has a lot to prove in MLS, no, no doubt. It's something where he's had success, but also it's just been kind of chopped up over a couple of years just because, you know, he had to fight for Tyler Miller. Tyler Miller finally, finally left. It's been his goal. He's been excellent with it. Um, so, you, so you wonder, is the year and a half he's been the true number one? Is that enough? Does he need, you know, more? Uh, to, to to push on, but certainly he's, he's nearing an age and he's, he's he's nearing a time where he'll have enough on his resume where a move could make sense. It's just a matter of how will that move come about, or who knows? Maybe he ends up being a free agent in a few years, and that's maybe the best way as a goalkeeper to to to, to get a, an opportunity like that. But we'll we'll certainly have to see. That's the nice thing about being a keeper is sometimes uh, it happens a little bit later. There's nothing wrong with a 28 year old Dane St. Clair moving to Europe and spending the next six seven seasons there for example because they, they can do that in, into their mid to late 30s so uh, i think for me best case scenario is whenever he makes that jump i would like it to happen at the beginning of the season so whenever the transfer window opens minnesota can line up their replacement dane sinclair has an opportunity to start at the beginning of a season because i think it's so important to get in there and get established the only other circumstance i could see is like i mentioned if there's an injury and there's they're, they're looking for an option the mls season's over they pick up a dane sinclair but more than likely, he probably will stay in Minnesota guaranteed for the 2023 season and probably maybe another one, but definitely a player in the near future that could potentially move to Europe. So that is all the time we have for it on this episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know down in the comments if there's any players that we left out that you think deserve a transfer this season. And as always, if you did enjoy this, be sure to drop a like, drop us up, and we will see you guys soon. Cheers, friends.